Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. At the Gardner Museum Art Heist, the biggest Isabella museum art heist Gardner in the Museum. world. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum theft is considered one of the most intriguing and mysterious art crimes of all time. The events of that night in March 1990 remain shrouded in mystery and speculation, and the search for the stolen artworks continues to this day. The two men who committed the theft were described as having a professional demeanor and were well prepared, which has led some to believe that the theft was carried out by experienced art thieves. Despite the widespread media coverage and intensive investigations, the identity of the thieves and the location of the stolen artworks have remained a mystery. In the years since the theft, there have been several leads and potential suspects, but none have led to the recovery of the stolen art. The museum has offered a $10 million reward for information leading to the recovery of the stolen artworks, but so far, the reward has gone unclaimed, so you can be the one who will claim it. But how all of this happened? We need to rewind it a little bit. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum is a historic museum located in Boston, Massachusetts, USA. It was founded in 1903 by Isabella Stewart Gardner, a wealthy American philanthropist and art collector. The museum was built to house Mrs. Gardner's extensive collection of art and artifacts, which she had accumulated over her lifetime through her travels and purchases. The museum building itself is considered a work of art, designed in a Venetian-style palace with beautiful courtyards, gardens, and a glass-roofed atrium. Mrs. Gardner had a vision of creating a museum that would not only display her art collection, but also serve as a cultural and educational center for the community. After Mrs. Gardner's death in 1924, the museum was open to the public as a nonprofit institution, and it has since become a popular tourist destination and a beloved cultural landmark in Boston. Today, the museum's collection includes over 2,500 objects, including paintings, sculptures, furniture, textiles, and other works of art from a variety of cultures and historical periods. The theft was carried out by two men who were disguised as police officers. They entered the museum at around 1.24 a.m. and overpowered the two security guards on duty. The thieves then proceeded to carefully select 13 works of art to steal, including paintings by Rembrandt, Vermeer, Degas, and Manet. The theft was carried out with precision and seemed to have been well planned, which has led some to believe that the thieves had inside information about the museum's layout and the location of the most valuable works of art. Despite the extensive surveillance systems in place, the thieves managed to leave the museum undetected. The artworks they stole were some of the most valuable in the world, with a total estimated value of over $500 million. The aftermath of the theft was significant, with an extensive investigation launched by the FBI and local law enforcement. Despite numerous leads and potential suspects, the identity of the thieves and the location of the stolen artworks remain unknown. The search for the missing masterpieces continues to this day. The artworks stolen are considered some of the most valuable and sought-after pieces in the world. They include four pieces by well-known artists, each with its own unique history and significance. 1. Rembrandt's Storm on the Sea of Galilee This 1633 painting is one of Rembrandt's most famous works and is considered a masterpiece of Baroque art. It depicts the biblical story of Jesus calming the storm on the Sea of Galilee and is notable for its dramatic use of light and shadow. 2. Vermeer's The Concert Painted in the 1660s The concert is one of Vermeer's most well-known works. It depicts a scene of two musicians and a singer enjoying music in a well-appointed room. The painting is considered a masterpiece of Dutch Golden Age art and is valued for its intricate details and subtle use of light. 3. Degas the Lacemaker Painted in the Late 19th Century The Lacemaker is one of Degas' most famous works. It depicts a young woman working on her lace making and is considered a masterpiece of Impressionist art. The painting is known for its delicate brushwork and soft, muted colors. 4. Manet Chez Tortoni Painted in 1878-79 Chez Tortoni depicts a Parisian cafe and is considered a masterpiece of Impressionist art. The painting is valued for its loose brushwork, vivid colors, and unique perspective, which gives the viewer a glimpse into Parisian life during the late 19th century. Since the theft of the artworks on March 18, 1990, the police have made significant efforts to recover the stolen pieces. Despite the passage of over 30 years, the investigation into the theft remains active and ongoing. One of the first steps taken by the police was to interview witnesses and potential suspects. The museum surveillance cameras recorded footage of the thieves, which was used to develop descriptions and sketches of the suspects. The police also spoke to neighbors and potential witnesses, as well as anyone who may have had information about the stolen 
pieces. The FBI has also been involved in the investigation, using advanced technology and forensic analysis to try to locate the stolen artworks. This has included DNA analysis, fingerprint analysis, and digital image analysis. The FBI has also worked closely with international law enforcement agencies, as the stolen artworks are believed to have been transported out of the country. The museum has also worked with the media to raise awareness about the theft and the search for the stolen artworks. However, the police and the museum remain committed to finding the missing pieces and reuniting them with the public. Over 30 years have passed since the theft, making it increasingly difficult to find credible leads and recover the stolen pieces. Additionally, many of the key witnesses and potential suspects may no longer be alive or may have forgotten important details about the theft. There are some suspects who have been identified by the authorities, and their past lives and possible motivations for the heist have been extensively studied. These are the primary suspects. David Turner had a long history of criminal activity prior to the theft. Turner was born in 1970 in the United Kingdom and grew up in the London area. He became involved in criminal activities at a young age and was first arrested when he was just 16 years old for stealing a car. Turner's criminal activities escalated as he got older and he became known for his involvement in high-profile art thefts. In the 1990s, he was part of a gang that stole several valuable paintings from a museum in France, and he was also suspected of involvement in the theft of a Van Gogh painting from a museum in Amsterdam. Turner moved to the United States in the 1990s and continued his criminal activities there. He was arrested several times for theft and fraud-related offenses and spent time in prison. The authorities believe that Turner may have been involved in the Gardner Museum heist because of his expertise in art thefts and his proximity to the museum at the time of the theft. However, he was never charged in connection with the theft, and he denied any involvement in the crime until his death in 2019. Robert Gentile, one of the suspects in the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist, had a long history of criminal activity prior to the theft. Gentile was born in 1936 in Hartford, Connecticut, and grew up in a working-class family. He dropped out of school in the eighth grade and began working odd jobs to make a living. Gentile's criminal activities began in his late teens, and he was arrested for the first time when he was just 20 years old for stealing a car. He continued to be involved in various illegal activities, including burglary, arson, and drug trafficking throughout his life. Gentile was also connected to the New England Mafia and had a reputation as a tough and savvy criminal. He was known for his ability to evade law enforcement and for his willingness to use violence to achieve his goals. Gentile's criminal activities led to numerous arrests and convictions over the years. He spent a significant amount of time in prison, including a 10-year sentence in the 1990s for drug trafficking. Despite his criminal activities, Gentile was known to some as a family man who enjoyed spending time with his wife and children. He also also had a passion for classic cars and was known to frequent car shows and swap meets. The authorities believe that Gentile may have been involved in the Gardner Museum heist because of his criminal connections and his proximity to the museum at the time of the theft. They have searched his home and property several times, looking for any evidence that may link him to the stolen artwork. Overall, Robert Gentile's criminal past and connections to organized crime make him a prime suspect in the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist. George Riesfelder, one of the suspects in the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum heist, had a history of criminal activity and drug addiction prior to the theft. Riesfelder was born in 1967 and grew up in the Boston area. He became involved in criminal activities at a young age and was first arrested when he was 18 years old for drug possession. Riesfelder's criminal activities continued throughout his life, and he was known to law enforcement as a prolific burglar and drug dealer. He was also addicted to heroin and cocaine, and his drug use fueled his criminal activities. Riesfelder was frequently in and out of prison, serving time for offenses such as burglary, drug possession, and assault. He was known to associate with other criminals who were involved in organized crime and had a reputation as a skilled burglar. However, Riesfelder was killed in 1991 in a drug-related shooting, and he was never charged in connection with the Gardner Museum heist. Now, based on this information, you can only try to guess who is really guilty.